what is the ballot measures? What are the ballot measures for Ohio this November? So in Ohio, uh, their process is similar to the process I have in Massachusetts, which means that they have indirect initiatives. So after a successful petition drive, they have to make it stop at the Ohio legislator and the legislator has to approve whether or not those questions will go on the ballot. So that's, um, yeah, it's harder. <laughs> it's harder, uh, just like Massachusetts, but we still pass, you know, still pass things. Um, in Ohio, they have a single subject rule. So it says only one proposal of the law or constitutional amendment to be proposed by initiative petition shall be contained in an initiative petition to enable the voters to vote on that proposal separately. You cannot have two subject matters in one uh, ballot measure question. Now let's go to this part here about competing initiatives. Ohio's law provides that in the event that conflicting measures are approved, the measure with the most affirmative votes takes effect. The other measure does not become law. And here's a, a little note here from Roger who helps me with these ballot measures. How would I improve this? I would apply the logic above when it's competing amendments and state statute, but if no one is an amendment and the other is a state statute, then regardless of the percentage that each one was approved for the amendment, I will always take, it will always take precedent over the state statute. Okay. So let's see what's on the ballot in Ohio this November. Ohio ballot measure one, establishing the citizens redistricting commission initiative. Here we go with trying to redistrict people again. A yes vote establishes the Ohio citizen redistricting commission, a 15 member non politician commission responsible for adopting state legislative and congressional redistricting plans. Okay. So what would this initiative change? It says here, um, the initiative would require the commission actions and deliberations to be conducted in public meetings. Actions would require the affirmative vote of at least nine out of the 15 commissioners, including at least two Republicans, two Democrats, and two independents. It says here, the ballot measure would require that statewide proportion of districts that favors each political party shall correspond closely to the statewide partisan preferences of the voters of Ohio. Interesting. And it goes on to say here that currently the Ohio constitution includes language about favoring or disfavoring political parties and statewide partisan preferences. So let's see who supports this. Citizens, not politicians. They are the ones leading the campaign in support of the ballot initiative. It says here, some of the endorsements for supporters for this campaign. This is interesting. Look at this. Hakeem Jeffries supports this, right? So Hakeem Jeffries is not from Ohio. So notice how sometimes, you know, house politicians they will be able to endorse some of these initiatives in other states that they don't live in, right? Hakeem's New York. So I thought that was interesting. And then also Senate Minority Leader Nikki Antonio. So this is supported by Democrats. And then you'll see um, Gerard Christensen, who is a candidate for U.S. House, supports it. And so does State Representative Mike Curtin. Yvette McGee Brown and Maureen O'Connor, the Democratic Party, Democratic Party of Ohio and the Libertarian Party of Ohio agree with this. The AFL agrees with this. The American Federation of Teachers 
So United Auto Workers, UAW organizations, A. Philip Randolph Institute, the ACLU of Ohio, and it goes on and on. We're not going to list every single one, but there are a lot of organizations that support this. And one of the arguments that you'll see here, this is from House Ohio House Minority Leader Allison Russo. This is an extraordinarily step in returning power to the people and putting citizens in charge of the redistricting progress in Ohio. With fair districts, we can fund our schools properly, create good paying jobs, and stop pushing through divisive legislation that does nothing to help Ohio's hardworking families get ahead. Interesting. And then we're going to see opposition to this as well. Opposition. Ohio Works is leading the campaign to tell you no to this ballot initiative. Who supports this? The Republican Party is opposing it, right? So we have U.S. Representative Troy Balderson and U.S. Representative Mike Carey as well and Speaker Mike Johnson. So again, Mike Johnson don't live in Ohio. So you see how they got him to support this too? Um, who else is opposed to this? Now, this has bipartisan support right here. John E. Barnes Jr., Ken Blackwell, Bernadine Kennedy Kent, Jim Renaki, Steve Stivers, so, and President Donald Trump. So you'll see Republicans and Democrats oppose it. The Republican Party of Ohio, America First Policy Institute. Uh, here's another one that was interesting. Black Equity and Redistricting Fund is opposing it. Interesting. Vivek Ramaswamy opposes it. He does live in Ohio. Okay. So one of the arguments here is this campaign, this campaign should be called political outcomes over people. It is designed to gerrymander guaranteed political wins for the progressive left with no accountability to more than 70% of the voters who approve the current system that produced a unanimous bipartisan set of maps of the General Assembly. Interesting. Let's see how much money has been spent for this measure. There has been over $26 million spent to support this measure and $0 spent to oppose it. Really? No money spent to oppose it. That was kind of shocking to me. So that's Ohio. And there's a note here from Roger. The setup of this commission, this commission makes no sense where they say that five Republicans and five Democrats and five independents or other parties. Ohio is one of the 20 states where voters don't have to register under a party. Well, how about that? Um, what's this Leland? Leland said, I'm from Ohio. The language on the ballot read so confusing that I voted against it. Yeah, that's, and you know what? That's a trick that they use sometimes too. Uh, they did that here in Massachusetts with ranked choice voting. People were so confused they voted against it. You know, um, but I hear you. Roger also points out here that, he said only politicians have to register under the party. So why are they even setting it up this way? It sounds like they're getting party officials rather than regular voters who would automatically be independent to draw up these redistricting maps. The only way you can truly have an independent redistricting commission is if this were an amendment to abolish all parties at every level of government. Then also in that amendment and struck congressmen and U.S. senators you sent to D.C. are prohibited from caucusing with either party when it comes to giving the majority one party over another. That's an interesting point there. So that is Ohio. Oklahoma ballot measures. Citizens of Oklahoma have it a little bit easier. They have a direct initiative, right? So direct initiative initiate statewide legislation via ballot measures in the form of either an initiated state statute or initiated constitutional amendments. They also have the power to repeal legislation via veto referendum. Oklahoma also has the single subject rule. We explain how that works. And let's dive in to Oklahoma. Let's just fast forward. Oklahoma. 
Okay. Sorry, guys. This this one um takes a minute. I'm just going through all this because I don't want to confuse people. Um, Oklahoma State question 833. Public infrastructure structure districts uh, amendment. A yes vote supports allowing municipalities to create public infrastructure districts when all property owners within the proposed district sign a petition and allow public infrastructure districts to issue bonds for public improvements if it is approved by voters within the district. Now, what would this actually do? It says that public infrastructure districts would be governed by a board of trustees who have the power to levy a special assessment of up to 10 mils. That's up to 100 per 100,000 of assessed value on properties benefiting from an improvement project to be used to reimburse the public infrastructure district for amounts paid by it for improvement projects, municipalities would have the ability to impose limitations on the powers of the public infrastructure districts. The state legislature would be authorized to enact legislation to implement public infrastructure districts, including legislation regarding how the board of trustees will be established. Um, I get a little jittery when I hear board of trustees. I'm not too fond of board of trustees just is what it is. Um, who supports this? John Haste and Terry O'Donnell. So the Republican party is supporting this measure. And here's one of the, um, reasons here. Can a single person impose a new tax? That's exactly what would happen if voters pass the Oklahoma state question 833. It proposes a new taxation, uh, district and a new property tax to fund public infrastructure inside that district. Unfortunately, the state question doesn't define public infrastructure. That's intentional. State question 833 says landowners can request a new public infrastructure taxation district to build public infrastructure provided that every owner agrees to the new tax. Well, that sounds hard to get, doesn't it? Interesting. Um, there's no money spent to support or oppose it. And a note here from Roger says they could have just done a public bank initiative. Yeah. Public banks, like that's a big one that slept on, I think. And Oklahoma state question 834 citizenship requirement for voting amendment. Uh oh, a yes vote supports amending the state constitution to provide that only U S citizens who are 18 years old or older can vote in elections. This includes, um, oh, sorry, thus including, it is prohibiting local governments from allowing non-citizens to vote as well. Interesting. I wonder why that's on the back. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh man. Oh, buddy, buddy, buddy. This is interesting. Who supports this? The Republican Party, Michael Bergstrom and Charles A. McCall. The Association of Mature American Citizens, Fair Elections Fund as well. Here's one of the arguments. What we are doing is safeguarding the intent of the constitutional language for the future to avoid confusion. Uh-huh. Well, the Association of Mature American Citizens goes a little bit deeper and they say amid the worst border crisis in American history, the U.S. faces an unprecedented threat from non-citizens voting in elections. Oh, boy. Who opposes this? The Democratic Party. Mary Boren and Carrie Hicks. Here's one of the arguments. I fail to see where the confusion might lie when it is currently a felony to register to vote in the state of Oklahoma if you're not a U.S. citizen. It's a political game. Well, well, well. No money spent to support or oppose this measure. And there's a note here from Roger. Usually those states that do allow for non-citizens to vote 
it will be by accident due to automatic voter registration, which I love so much because it increases the independent and no party, non-affiliated, non-partisan count by automatically registering you when you are interacting with the state agency like the DMV. The drawback is since non-citizens can get driver's licenses now, there is no check for the state to check with immigration to find out if they are citizens first before they're automatically registering them to vote. Oklahoma is not automatic voter registration state, so they shouldn't have a problem. However, those that are should amend their AVR law to force state agencies to check with immigration first before registering them to vote. Interesting there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is Ohio and Oklahoma.